Hi, I'm your host, Carmen. I'm a preschool teacher, a certified life coach, and an ADHDer who was diagnosed later in life. I am my own advocate, so I decided to create this podcast to help people cope with, learn about this complex neurodevelopmental disorder, and feel an authentic sense of connection in this community. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi friend. Thank you for pressing play on another episode of Authentically ADHD with your host, me, Carmen. Yes, today we're going to be talking about exercise, but wait, 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 don't go anywhere. Do not skip to the next ex- episode. I know. Exercise and ADHD, it's hard. It's really, it's really not easy. It's not an easy thing. And I actually started treating my ADHD with exercise first without even knowing it. And that is what we're going to talk about today in this episode of ADHD and exercise and why it works and how to make it work for you. And like I say, not more work for you. So let's get started. And make sure to stick around to the end for the tips. So if you follow me on Instagram, which you totally should, I am at authentically ADHD with Carmen Iris. And um, I am a runner and I did run in college. Um, I didn't know how to, surprise, surprise. So I just said to like, you know, impulsively do it. And I started getting pain in my knees. So I went to the college, you know, I was at Illinois State University. So I went to the college, like, on-site doctor person, you know, and they told me, well, she asked me if I had ever trained in running before. And I'm like, well, no, I just, you know, thought you just go, you know, like any person. I mean, you know, people without ADHD could do that, but that's kind of a hallmark sign there. When you think you can just do something without really looking up the ways to do it, like not keeping your hips square or running up hills or whatever it is that I did that she said um, my cartilage in my knees was not, it was like uh, withering away basically because I was not running correctly. I was like pigeon toed and stuff. Anyways, I will get a little bit more back into that. Because I always did get the runner's high. No matter how much it was, like, after my knees started hurting, I did get that runner's high. And I didn't really know why or where it came from until I did this deep dive. Um, Like, I had an idea that it was some kind of, like, oh, it's good for my, my brain and my body. But the fact that I have ADHD and I didn't really know that I was secretly treating it hoping this little tidbit of information gets you to keep listening (laughs) because I know ADHD and exercise I said it once and I'll say it again it's boring it can get tedious and it's sometimes the same thing over and over again oh it's just not fun for the ADHD brain we don't like it we like novelty So if you have been listening along, you do know some of this already. So I'm just going to quickly overview some of the parts of the ADHD brain that I'm going to be talking about today. It's basically a mental health disorder that's primarily caused by an imbalance of neurotransmitters, which are the little workers or messengers in your brain, dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, and, and other ones. So the runner's high that I didn't really know where it was coming from after doing a deep dive and doing some research for this podcast, it was coming from dopamine that was low in my brain. So I got like double the runner's high because I had low dopamine in my brain. Then a huge rush of endorphins, which also is amazing for ADHD. (laughs) So that's why... Personally, I felt better when I would run and get that quote-unquote runner's high. (music) 
Are you an adult with ADHD who is looking for a program or community to become a part of? Well, I have the answer. Visit IHaveADHD.com slash focused and join the focused program. If you want my link to get some money off, let me know. It has changed my life. Let me know if you want my coupon code for $50 off your membership to Focused, the program for ADHD adults, led by Kristen Carter. So Kelly and I will be running a workshop on October 8th of 2022. Head to the show notes and fill out the form to register and join us for some fun. So in my research, I learned that exercise helps all brains in several different ways, such as improving memory, enhancing learning and making it easier to learn, uh, AKA making it easier for the brain to grow, neuroplasticity type stuff. It allows you to retain new information because, again, our brains have neuroplasticity. They can grow, they can change, and they can create neurons and form in a more healthy fashion. Wow, I really tripped over my words there. Okay, anyways, let's continue. So it can also improve your mood, hence the dopamine and the endorphins that it lets out. I've also found that things like yoga and meditation improve my mood because they help me slow down. Um, It can also help you feel and look healthy and great. And like who doesn't want to look great like and feel great? Like I dare you to email me and tell me, no, I want to keep looking like crap and I would love to just not look healthy. Like, I've not met many people who would just say that to me. They might say they're comfortable the way they are or whatever, but it's just a little endorphin-boosting, you know, part of it that it not only does it help you feel amazing by helping you be healthy, but then you also look healthy. I've noticed ever since I've started exercising on a regular basis, probably for the last, oh, three years, that my adult acne has cleared up. Not only have I lost weight and gained muscle, I'm not just skinny, I'm strong. Like, I could, you know, like if I need to like defend myself and run away, I can. Anyways, I digress. It can also decrease a chance of Alzheimer's, which people with ADHD are more likely to get. It helps blood flow throughout the body and the brain. So it keeps, like I've always said, a body and brain in motion stays in motion. Again, when we do other things such as yoga, meditation, and other types of exercises, it does other things for our brains, like calming it down. Instead of staying in motion, we are literally self-talking it to stop thinking because sometimes that's the only way we can get it to stop (laughs) so I use exercise in several different ways as I mentioned Um, and I used several different avenues to avoid the boredom that can come along with doing an activity repeatedly for a person with ADHD especially with my ring of fire symptoms and if you are a little like huh when I said ring of fire symptoms (laughs) Uh, go back to episode, um, it's the first one of episode of season two, and it's called What is ADHD Really? Part two. So go there and you can learn more about the ring of fire symptoms that I have, which is basically just a ton of them. I'm in the 90th percentile. I don't know if I've ever shared that before on the podcast, but when they diagnosed me with the full evaluation, they told me that I was in the 90th percentile. And then I showed a combined type of ADHD. When I did a deep dive um, a few episodes ago about the seven types of ADHD, 
I realize that I am not just combined. I also have the ring of fire symptoms of ADHD or of ADD. So anyways, go back to that episode if you want more info on that. So I run, I run in the morning, early in the day, and I run before I take my medication. I do this for several reasons. I've heard it on several podcasts as a recommendation by doctors and people with PhDs. I've also heard it from people without PhDs because I value their opinion just as much. Um, And I've also experienced it. I've done it. I wake up and my sneakers are the first thing to go on my feet. And I go outside because fresh air helps me wake up. Walking and running in the morning help my brain start getting in motion. Then if you there's research that if you exercise a high endurance exercise in the morning and then about an hour and a half after you're done with that exercise you take if you do take medication you take your ADHD medication it can prove to be more effective the exercise and the medication and It's not just covering up the symptoms, people. Even if you just take medication, you don't exercise. This medication does not just cover up the symptoms. You can Google that. I'm not going to, I'm going to hop off that soapbox before I even get on it. (laughs) Anyways, it can improve our brains. We can like literally grow them because of neuroplasticity. Like that's amazing. So I do yoga and I stretch to help my muscles after the intense exercises that I do like running and weightlifting. I like weightlifting. I like certain programs. I am a part of Beachbody. I am a coach. I am not selling that through here or I mean if you want to like contact me on Instagram about that that's cool. Anyways um, it was actually one of the first things that helped me. Okay Rogue. Um, That's the dog. I'm dog sitting. Anyways, it actually, uh, that was one of the first things that helped me realize how much exercise could help my brain was when I started the program um, and the Total Solution of Beachbody because it comes with the Superfood Shake, which is the amazing breakfast for ADHDers, which is high protein and healthy carbohydrate. So it was a great thing and I didn't even realize it until I was doing my deep dive on this episode. So the types of weight lifting that I like to do, the programs that I like to do, they are very versatile. They are very different. They phase up each week. They don't keep the same moves. They are fast paced so that I don't get bored. I also incorporate um, programs that improve mental health. So the ones that talk about mental health while working out because it is proven that while we're working out your brain is more receptive receptive to information so while i'm working out and they're giving me this great information about mental health i'm retaining it and at a better pace for somebody with adhd i also like to do yoga and stretching at night um to help relieve tension in my body a lot of people with ADHD especially like me with the ring of fire and tension and the anxiety that comes along with it and the internal hyperactivity um I do like to stretch out at night very mindfully and I end that with meditation and journaling um I know I'm getting a little off topic here but this is all exercise friends yoga is exercise stretching walking I don't care if you are just getting up and doing squats during the commercials of your TV shows you're exercising good for you awesome job I want to shout you out so screenshot this podcast screenshot your sweaty selfie tag me at authentically ADHD on Instagram and I want to shout you out um, because I believe that we all deserve to share our wins so here are some other things that ADHD exercise all of these things the benefits that it can have so exercise for me helps me clear my head I have oh my brain is always 
just going. It's very hard for me to turn my brain off, but exercise really helps me do that. Um, it helps me get into the moment, helps me with radical acceptance. And I can say that emotional dysregulation is one of my worst symptoms, and it definitely way, 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 way improves my regulation of my emotions because it's the, it just does. It also, um, besides regular exercise, like doing it regularly throughout the week, um, can help boost your mood overall. It also can help prevent depression. Don't know if I've ever shared this on the podcast, but I also have situational slash seasonal depression. And I've lowered my dose since exercising. And I've been on the lowest dose, which is just a maintenance dose, to keep the uh, chemicals that are not in my brain present in my brain so that I can properly function. So, but I've had to literally go to the lowest maintenance dose because I exercise and I no longer get situational depression. Not saying that I never will again. I'm just saying that I have managed it to a point that I no longer feel depressed. I no longer have self-deprecating thoughts. I actually have quite positive self-talk. Um, I actually... This one, you know, this podcast is going to get an explicit rating. Hopefully that makes it more interesting. But I like to call myself a badass bitch a lot because I feel like one when I lift weights and I flex and I'm like, yeah, I could totally like I can do anything because if, like I say, if you catch me on Instagram, I was not an exercise person. I walked the mile in high school. Okay, I took the easiest classes. So for me to be telling you that exercise is super great and super important for ADHD, that's that's a big thing. So I really hope that you take this episode and use it to your full advantage. And I want to hear about it because there's definitely going to be a part two because I have like five more pages of research and I'm really hungry and I want to eat dinner. So I hope you have a fabulous day, weekend, whatever it is that you're doing, and stay authentic, my friends. Hey, listener, if you're enjoying this show, you should totally subscribe to it so that you can see when new episodes pop right up into your feed. In Spotify, if you go up at the top and hit click follow, It'll notify you every time there's a new episode. Then, really quick, as you're listening to this, right under the follow little um, bubble, there's a rating bubble. If you could just rate this podcast and give some feedback, possibly maybe answer the poll question that's underneath the podcast, I would really, really appreciate it. I hope that you're enjoying whatever you're doing today or tonight. Have a great one. This is my friendly reminder that I am not a doctor. I am just a fellow ADHD teacher and life coach. If you suspect that you have ADHD or some other mental illness, please seek help from a medical professional. As I always suggest, see a psychologist to get a full evaluation. Back to the show. So, you know how I really don't like to end episodes without some tips. So, here are a couple just minor tips to get you started. Like I said before, getting started could just mean getting up off the couch when you're watching TV and doing some sort of movement, whether that be walking back and forth, doing squats, toe touches, stretching out your body, whatever it is during the commercial of your TV shows. Or if you're going to go on a walk, uh, listen to your favorite podcast, music, whatever, guilty, pleasure thing that 
you feel might be a waste of time. Try not to scroll Instagram, though, and walk. You might, like, run into other humans. I've done that, personally. Um, Another thing is just up your water intake. Just simply doing that gives you more energy, especially because our brains and bodies are made up of so much water. Um, It will help you move, and at least to get up to pee, you know? Like, just get up and start moving. Find stuff that interests you. I run because I like to be outdoors. If you don't like to be outdoors, find a gym or an indoor program that like works for you. I found what worked for me that kept me interested and that kept me wanting to exercise. That's the whole point. Find something that you like that you want to keep doing and when you don't want to do it anymore, find something else that catches your interest Because, my friend, if you have ADHD, you can find something else to catch your interest. So I'm going to end this episode again by saying, just find something. I want to shout you out and stay authentic, my friends.